Are we living in a video game? Are we actually part of a giant simulation? The question of whether we are living in a simulation is more related to something more narrow. That is, is this computer program that we are living in intentionally created or is it just a natural occurrence? It seems to me it's a hard question to resolve because it's easy to imagine a game designer, a simulation designer, making it so sophisticated that you, you can't tell. So uh, there is this argument that, for instance, Elon Musk made that um, we can build game consoles that create virtual worlds that look a lot like simulations to us of this universe and that can be so realistic that we cannot really distinguish them. And this argument is to make that every civilization that has sufficient technical capabilities is going to build many of these game consoles. So the probability that when you look around and you find yourself in a pretty realistic looking world that you're actually in a simulation is much higher than the probability that you are in base reality. But I think what this doesn't take into account is the level of detail that you can achieve in such a simulation. In the simulation hypothesis, right, there's some programmer at a lower level that has created the simulation that's us. But that programmer themselves could be a simulation by another programmer at a lower level. And this keeps going. There's, there could be a hierarchy of these different levels of simulation until you get to some bottom level. It seems that our universe has an amazing amount of detail. And to get this uh, amount of detail in um, a subset of this computer is, is very hard because if you build a computer here on this planet, it means you cannot simulate a big universe in it. You can only simulate a very, very, very small, slow universe in it. And in the standard story of the simulation hypothesis, at the bottom level, there's a physicalist space-time world where there's a real programmer in space and time with a real physical computer that's programming the whole thing. So our space-time might be virtual, but at the bottom, there is a real space-time with a real physical world. And I'm denying that. So every universe that you stack into another universe is going to have many orders of magnitude less detail. So uh, I think if you find yourself in a very detailed universe that has many, many galaxies and much more detail than you need to have intelligent life and civilizations in it and so on, it's unlikely going to, going to be a simulated universe created by a civilization. It's more likely that it's space reality. I think you can argue that whoever has written the simulation, whatever super entity has written the simulation, could make it so sophisticated that even your memories are a result of, this, of being programmed by the simulator or simulatrix. So the question is at some level irrelevant, but another level, I think we would have to agree it's unknowable. You can just presume any level of sophistication uh, that makes it undetectable to us. If the question is, could we be living inside of a computer program, then my answer would be, of course, yes. Because the only thing that we get with some certainty from the outside world is information. And the only thing that we find with certainty in this information is regularity. And for a system to produce regularity in information, that is, discernible differences that change in a way that is somewhat not random and somewhat predictable, for this it needs to compute. So it's necessary and sufficient for the universe, whatever else it does, that it computes. And we cannot really know what else it does. So in, in my view, by the way we define computers and computer science, it's necessary and sufficient that the universe is some kind of computer in a pretty literal sense. There have been a lot of science fiction stories where people discover that they're living in a dome or inside a hollow world or underground. And the metaphors for this are from our everyday experience. You, you hear about kids who've been kidnapped and kept in a room till they're 14 and they know nothing of the world outside. And the human mind apparently at some level is incapable of detecting that outside world unless something goes wrong. The idea that this is all a simulation that we're not seeing reality as it is um, is something that I'm saying as well. That this is, that space-time itself is just a data structure. Physical objects are just a data structure. They're not objective reality. Doesn't mean that we know what kind of computational class the system is in. And there is, I think, a lot of con contest in, in ideas and physics, what kind of computational class the universe really is in, what capabilities it has, what it can compute and what it cannot compute. But um, still, it's computational in some sense. Of course, we cannot really know this because no feature in the world clearly points at this thing being 
a simulation in this sense. I don't see anything that would convince me that we are in a simulation. But if it is one, I don't think it's for our benefit. I don't think that uh, all these galaxies um, and stars and all the intricate um, elementary particle structures that we can observe in some sense, and that are not necessary for our experience as primates on the planetary surface, uh, would need to be painted on the telescopes and microscopes by the simulator. So I don't think that these are smokes and mirrors when we look into the sky and we see these bazillions of galaxies. I do think that they, if this is a simulation, then there would be an important feature of the simulation, which means the simulation is not there to create us. The simulation is probably there to um, explore some aspects of hypothetical physics. And we are just a random side effect or an artifact of that fact that uh, evolution is possible in this universe. So we could emerge in it. I agree with the simulation hypothesis that we're not seeing um, the truth. We're seeing something other than the truth. I think it's very unlikely that we are in a simulation. Because if I would build a simulation of a universe, I would make the computer that it runs on irreversible. What that, that means is that the operations that happen in that universe can delete bits. It means that a state that we observe in the universe can have multiple possible states that it comes from. And if we look at what we know empirically in physics, this doesn't seem to be the case. Our universe seems to be reversible. And this means we cannot really delete bits. If we cannot delete bits, it means that everything that we like is irreversible. You know, you stabilize your body temperature. You forget yesterday's body temperature in your body. Uh, it means that you have to delete bits in some sense. All the things that we are interested in, life, planets, stars, computers, organisms, minds, are irreversible in some sense. They all need to delete bits to keep uh, their structure stable against the onslaught of the substrate, which is, has its different logic and its different direction that it wants to go into. So in some sense, you get waste bits. You need to put, uh, throw these bits of, uh, out of your system. And this is what we as observers perceive as increasing entropy, these waste bits. And if you would be living in a simulation like Minecraft, in Minecraft you can build perpetual mobiles. That's because you don't have entropies in Minecraft. Minecraft can delete bits. It can forget its previous state. This universe apparently cannot. So the reason why we cannot have nice things in this universe, why we cannot have perpetual mobiles, why entropy is always accumulating and is always going to get us in the end, why we will always have to die as living beings. That's why life is always temporary. Every self-stabilizing system will only have a finite lifespan in this universe. That would not be a feature I would put into a simulation. I'm denying that at any point, um, space-time and physical objects correspond to an objective reality. For me, as a philosopher, to prove that we were living in a video game was an extraordinary level of effort. But if you can do it, bring it on. Get smarter faster with new videos every week from the world's biggest thinkers.